we realized that psychosocially supportive relationships and trust are key to improving the health and well being of millions of people. I'm Victor, CEO of Care.Coach. I founded Care.Coach originally to solve senior loneliness based on our family experience trying to support my grandmother who lived alone. And since then, we've realized that psychosocially supportive relationships and trust are key to improving the health and well being of millions of people. We've had millions of conversations already with health plan members to build personal relationships and coach healthy behaviors, improving member experience and preventing avoidable cost of care for our health plan customers. Health behaviors like diet, exercise, and med adherence are the main driver of outcomes. And adults with poor health behaviors cost $2,000 a year more in healthcare expenses. Traditional solutions like nurse led coaching don't scale, and not everybody has the positive influence of healthy friends and family. So, the Care.Coach platform drives health behaviors across entire populations. Using our insurer customers' data, Care.Coach Augur predicts who will have the highest behaviorally avoidable costs. And then Care.Coach Hospitality Hub in Kansas contacts these complex high risk members to opt them in and ship them a Care.Coach managed device to deli deliver our avatar and video visit solutions for real time face to face engagement. We also have a device agnostic texting solution for low risk members called Care.Coach Farah. Overall, this platform drives health plan growth, quality, and cost goals. Let's drive dive right into the uh, left side of this platform for complex care. So the avatar on each care.coach device is a lot of fun and builds world-class member loyalty through personalized conversations that are driven by our global team of empathic people we call health advocates. Our health advocates are assisted by our state-of-the-art generative AI engine for free-form conversation and by software-directed evidence-based protocols for health behavior coaching and care coordination. These protocols direct when our health advocates escalate to our customers' care management teams for situations like confusion about meds or new health conditions. And then the Care.Coach video visit solution, our telemedicine and family connectivity product, can be used to close that loop on the same ultra-simple cellular internet-connected device. Now that we've covered our complex care solutions, let's dive into Care.Coach Fera for building similarly supportive relationships as our avatars, but device agnostic and at much lower cost across large populations, thanks to our AI engine. As the leading consumer facing AI for developing healthcare supportive relationships, Care.Coach Engine powers Fera to engage in friendly conversation and to respond to situations important to health insurers. Our technology is proprietary and trained on the millions of conversations we've already had through our avatars and is continuously improved through reinforcement learning from our hu human health advocate team. Our avatar and video visit solutions are perfect for program of all inclusive care for the elderly or PACE health plans. And we're already contracted with almost 20% of all PACE sites nationally. Our, av our Afera solution is designed to improve the health behaviors of much larger populations, such as the millions of Medicare Advantage members that we have access to through contracts with two of the largest Medicare Advantage insurers in the country. Care.Coach drives validated health outcomes, including reduced depression, home care needs, emergency department visits, falls, and loneliness. Our outcomes have been published by top universities and happy customers. We also drive business outcomes like major improvement in member experience and star ratings, which drive Medicare Advantage revenue and membership growth as well as reducing total cost of claims by almost $400 per member per month. I'm a roboticist. I served in the Canadian Armed Forces and conducted a clinical trial at MIT on space telerobotics before founding Care.Coach. And between Dr. Kersens and I, we've won about $10 million in federal awards for Care.Coach, which has kept us capital efficient and subsidized our technology development led by Deepak and Dr. Lam, who's a Stanford physician turned data scientist. Kendra's a former PACE health plan customer of ours who won a state governor's care innovation award for her avatar program. And it turns out happy customers make for great salespeople. Avatar sales in our core market of PACE health plans is doubling year over year. And combined with our other product sales and cash flow from federal R&D awards, our revenue run rate now totals over $5 million per year. 
So if you'd like to invest in us and help improve the health and well-being of millions of people, please get in touch. Victor, congratulations on just the momentum in, in revenue and the direction of the business. Um, some Thanks. quick questions for you. I noticed on slide nine, you know, you had your health plan member experience driving top line revenues. How exactly does that happen? And where do the net savings come from? Yeah, that's important. It's, it's how, how a company creates value. So uh, there's a company called Navigant that has a report about this. So what happens is when, when you increase the star rating on a five-star scale for the plan, a one-star improvement is associated with something between eight and 12% uh, annual increase in plan enrollment. You know, when you retire, you got to choose a Medicare Advantage plan. You'll probably pick the one with the highest star rating that you're eligible for. Uh, the other thing is every star approximately increases your revenue by 13 to 18% because you get bonus payments. The government actually pays you more per member if you have a higher star rating. So it's make or break for the Medicare Advantage business. Um, and, and by improving the member's experience and their relationship with their health plan and with their health care uh, through the avatar relationship and talking with them day to day, really getting to know them and helping with care coordination, we help with that. Uh, it's a really big deal because even for a, a moderate Medicare Advantage plan of like less than 100K people in it, uh, we're talking about over $100 million a year in top line. From, from a single star. Got it. So there's a huge ability to impact the p and and the quality of the yeah. experience here. Um, so large language models, right? Everybody is talking about them. How do you differentiate Farah from ChatGPT and other language models that are out there? Yeah, it's a great question. There's a lot of startups popping up. And uh, the thing about these big tech large language models that everybody's using is they keep getting better and better as functional assistants. So if you want to summarize some documents, cheat on a university essay, write some code, they're great. They keep getting better at that, but they're actually getting more boring as conversational partners because of political correctness and big tech companies protecting their brands. And so what Care.Coach does is we build our own proprietary models that focus on friendly social conversation, having empathy and detection of health-related situations like suicidal ideation, new health conditions, housing, food, transportation, insecurity, uh, things that matter to our customers. And then in these situations, we can tap into our 24-7 health advocate team to respond appropriately, as opposed to you know, entirely depending on AI. And then um, in addition to the millions of historical conversations that our avatars have had and that serve as what's called fine-tuning data for these proprietary models that we own, we also do what's called reinforcement learning with human feedback or RLHF using this health advocate team. So it keeps getting better. And because our health advocates specialize in this, our LLM is not limited by the labeler's skill or empathy. Like, like for big tech companies, they'll hire these gig workers or use like random consumers to, to label training data. And so your empathy and skill level to do these, these healthcare supportive tasks is limited. We have some questions from the audience, Victor. Um, one, uh, again, from Esther Dyson. Uh, what I like is that your avatars are still clearly not pretending to be people. So we just talked about generative AI from a service standpoint, but how does it affect your marketing? Yeah, that's a really important question because the whole value proposition of the avatar is that it's the face for a team of people. It even explains that in its standard enrollment process when it meets a new client. Um, the shift towards AI um, changes the dynamic a little bit on the FARA side. We've actually done focus groups with our Medicare Advantage customers to discover that in a Medicare population, they would rather frame, they, they would opt in with greater uh, frequency to a service that was framed as a human team that's augmented by technology. And so uh, that's in fact how we've built FARA. And why I've described it as when Thera detects these situations, like for example, somebody's talking in a way that might indicate suicidal ideation, or they're talking about a health concern now, uh, we don't just rely on the AI, we actually loop in our health advocate team and follow some operational protocols that we've agreed upon with our customers. And so that's pretty special. And we, we are then actually able to frame the service as in fact, how Medicare members want it to be framed, which, which is 
a, a human service that's augmented by technology. It's just, it's interesting how over time, the proportion of work done by the machine can can increase versus the um, the proportion of work done by like humans that are reviewing things, approving things, screening things. Mm -hmm.